Hey folks, welcome to another advisory period. It's Friday. It's Friday, baby. It's our favorite day of the week. That's right. Congratulations. Excuse me. That's right, folks. Congratulations. You've made it through the first week of the 24-25 school year. Very exciting stuff. I know that there's still a lot of change to get used to. You're trying to get used to waking up in the morning again and coming to school and getting to places on time. Maybe your schedule is changing and everything is a little bit up in the air right now and that is okay, all right? The first two weeks are always a little bit crazy. Today, once again, we are talking about how to be a And today we're going to be talking about attendance, tardies, and AFC, or attendance for credit. Woke up this morning and I got myself to school. I was on time because you know I'm not a fool. Every time I go to class, I got to be on time. Cause that's the only way they say that I can expand my mind. Cause I said, woke up this morning and I got myself to school. Woke up this morning and I got myself, got myself to school. That's right, folks, today, oh, excuse me. That's right, folks, today we are talking about attendance tardies and AFC, or attendance for credit. First, I wanna explain why attendance is so important, and that is because it is state law that requires all enrolled students to attend school on time, all day, every day school is in session. If a student has to be absent, the school requires a written explanation to excuse the absence. Students should bring excuse notes to their assistant principal's office. So wherever your counselor and assistant principal are, that's where you should bring those notes. Also, if you bring them to the attendance office, I would reckon that they will take care of them there as well. Attendance is also important for receiving credit for classes. To receive credit for a class a student is passing, the student must attend the class at least 90% of the days the class is offered for the entire period of instruction. And this counts for each individual class, not just one day of school. So you have to go to class 90% of the times that they meet in order to get credit for that class in addition to passing. So if I do some quick math, let me see here, beep, boop, bop. So there are roughly 180 days of school divided by two because we have an A day and a B day. That's 90 days. And then 90% of 90 days is 81. So after the ninth day of missing class, if you're absent again, you will be out of compliance with the 90% and you'll have to do AFC, which we'll talk about in a minute. Excessive number of absences, which means that the student is absent 10 or more unexcused days within a six month period, will result in attendance officers filing a truancy complaint, which may result in court proceedings. So yes, attendance is important for your education, and in order to understand all that is going on in a class, but it is also the state law. But if you miss a lot or you have to miss because I don't know, maybe you're in the hospital for a long time, hopefully not, but uh, whatever sort of circumstance is causing you to miss, you're not immediately going to truancy court. You will have an opportunity to get back some of that credit through AFC or attendance for credit. So if you're over the 10% of the class, if you've missed five absences over 10%, then you have to do two hours of the course. If you've missed six to eight, you have to do three hours. Nine absences is five hours. 10 absences is seven hours of the course. But then 11 or more, and you have to have very specific 10 hours of course tutoring, and it has to be approved by the principal. So it's important to do everything you can to not get to this point because AFC meets after school and it's just more time that you have to spend at school. So don't skip, go to class because otherwise you have to do more later and that's dumb. You wanna do less now. Go to class on time, be there every time you're well enough to be there and you'll be fine. Speaking of going to class on time, let's talk about tardies. Teachers will close their doors when the tardy bell rings or at least when the tardy bell rings, you will be counted tardy. When a student is tardy, Students have to enter class, sign the tardy log, and the teacher enters a tardy in power school. Students who accumulate four to eight tardies will serve a lunch detention, one per four tardies. And students with eight and above will be subjected to multiple lunch detentions and a parent conference. All tardies will reset to zero every new nine weeks. And so if you have a bunch of tardies for 
the first quarter, whenever it switches over to the next nine weeks, you have a clean slate. A new opportunity to not be tardy. Students that have no tardies for a given nine weeks or students who reduce their tardies from a previous nine weeks will be celebrated and rewarded in various ways throughout the year. In an addition to the threat of lunch detention, it's just so important to get to class on time. It helps keep our hallways more safe and it also helps you get right into the subject matter that your teachers have for you at the beginning of class so you're not confused when you finally do get to class. So here are Mr. Hall's best practices to avoid being late to class, all right? Do these things. Number one, keep your social interactions brief. All right, five minutes is not a lot of time. You don't have time to catch up on all the tea or the cheese may. Cheese may. You don't really have time for any of that. You got to give a brief high five or a fist bump or something like that and move on to your class and uh, your friends should do the same. Number two is find the quickest path to your next class. You don't have time to do three laps before you go to your class or to walk your significant other to their class when yours is on the other side of the building. So find the quickest path between each of your classes. That's what you should be doing this week. Number three, keep phone use to a minimum. Of course, since it's non-instructional time, like we talked about yesterday, you can have your phone during the passing period. You can have that out. There's no regulation on that. However, if you're very distracted by your phone and you're walking really slow or people are bunching up behind you because you're walking really slow, that's not good. So make sure that if you're gonna use your phone during the passing period that you do it on the go as much as possible and that you are not slowing yourself or others down by being on your phone. Number four, this is a big one. You probably, unless it's real, real quick and the bathroom is on the way, you probably don't have time to use the bathroom during passing periods. So wait until after the first 10 minutes of class are up to use your teacher's hall pass to then go to the bathroom. And that'll prevent you from being tardy and you won't have a bunch of adults giving you a hard time for being late to class in the hall. And then number five, walk with purpose. My goodness, some of you people walk slow through the halls. All right, you don't have to run through the hall. In fact, I would very much suggest that you don't. So again, you avoid bonking people on the head. But put a little pep in your step. Put a little pep in your step. You gotta walk quickly, walk with purpose through the halls so that you can get to your class on time. This is a big building and five minutes is not a lot of time. And that'll do it for attendance, tardies, and AFC. We will be announcing through advisory and probably some flyers on the wall whenever we start doing AFC for the fall. But you, that's right, you, are gonna go to class on time. And you're gonna go to class every day that you are well enough to go to class. Our goal is to have nobody in AFC because everybody goes to class and they go to class on time. Well, folks, that about does it for this week when it comes to how to be a Longhorn. We're gonna have more videos next week. And then the week after, we will start on our normal advisory programming. But folks, it is Friday, and we're very excited about Fridays. Fridays are a good day of the week. And occasionally on Fridays, we will have what is called Fun Friday. So if your class has already finished the icebreaker questions, which means everybody in the class has been able to at least answer one of your teacher's questions with the numbers, then you can move on to the game for Fun Friday this week, which is Two Truths and a Lie. It's a classic game. You come up with two things that are true about yourself and one thing that is a lie. And you try to see if people can guess which one of them is the lie. So have a good time, regardless of which of those activities you do. Be good to yourself and others this weekend. Get some rest, and I will see you on Monday.